Welcome back to part two of web scraping with Google Sheets. In the last video, we covered import HTML, import data, and import feed. But in this video, we're going to cover the final command, import XML, which can help us extract data we otherwise couldn't before. So import XML takes two arguments, a URL and an XPath. When you call import XML, it fetches an XML document with the content from the website you're trying to parse through, and XPath can help us navigate through those elements and attributes of these XML documents. So if you're unfamiliar with XPath, that's totally fine since we won't be going too in-depth in this video, but it is pretty powerful. So if you want to learn more, I'd highly recommend checking out the W3 Schools tutorial that walks through the basic syntax. And I'll go ahead and link this in the description. But I'm going to assume that you don't know much XPath, so we're going to be using a Chrome extension called Selector Gadget that you can go ahead and download, and that'll actually fetch the appropriate XPaths. So once you've got that downloaded, we can go ahead and get started. The first example we're going to be working with is Craigslist, and we're going to want to scrape all of these listings. So we'll start by grabbing the URL at the top and pasting it in our Google Sheet. Then we can go back to Craigslist and start grabbing our information. So when you have Selector Gadget installed, you should see it at the top right of your screen up in Chrome. You can click on it once, and now as you move your mouse over your browser, you'll see different elements on the page being highlighted. Essentially, if you start clicking on data, Selector Gadget will try to interpret what you're trying to select and then generate a tag associated with all of that information. So for this example, we want to grab the listing name, the price, the date, and the location in parentheses. And the quickest way to do this, instead of breaking that up into those four different categories, we actually want to click on whatever parent node that contains that information. So in this case, instead of clicking on just the text here, that would only get us the names of the listings, but it wouldn't get us the other information. So I'll clear that selection and instead try to click on the container that contains all that information, which looks like it's down here. So I'll click on that once, and you can see all these yellow boxes populate, and it includes the name of the listing, the date, the price, and the location. So once we've got our appropriate data selected, we go down to the bottom right where it says XPath, and then this box will pop up. We'll copy this information, hit OK, and go back to our spreadsheet and paste that in a cell. So now we can call the import XML command, pass in the URL as our first parameter, and our XPath as a second parameter, and we can see all the listings populate in our spreadsheet. We've got the date, the name of the listing, and the price, but also the location in just one cell. Now, if I want to get the price specifically as its own column, I could maybe do some regular expression, but I'm going to show you how we can just get the price selected with Selector Gadget. First, I'm going to format this column just so it cuts off the text, and I'll add our prices in this new column over here. So back to our Craigslist page, we'll go ahead and clear the selection. And now, like I mentioned, we just want to grab this price. So we click it once but you see that the price is selected two times for each listing now, both at the top here and down here in the description. So just to explain more about how Selector Gadget works, anything that's yellow, if you click on, it'll deselect, and anything that's not yellow, it'll try to select. So we want just these bottom prices selected, but not the top ones. So I'll click on this up here, and you can see it only keeps our bottom prices selected. So we'll go back down to the XPath button, copy this, and go to Sheets. We'll paste this new XPath up here and essentially write the same command as before, import XML with the URL and then this new XPath of just the prices. And now you can see we have all the data we wanted from those listings. Now, theoretically, you don't need to use Selector Gadget to actually scrape this information. You could go into Inspect Element and grab the XPath manually. So I'll just show you what that looks like. So over here, I'll right click, hit Inspect. And you can see that there are these four tags, the span, the time, the A tag, and another span, all within this paragraph tag. So this is what I meant by selecting the container. And if we didn't have Selector Gadget and wanted to replicate this result, we would just need to specify that we want all the information within this P class result info. So I'll go back to our spreadsheet. I'll get rid of this for now. And instead, I'll make this slash slash, which essentially says that we're not going to be in the root of our nodes. This is going to bring us down to any node that'll fit this description, the P tag, where the class name is going to be result dash info. And you can see that even though these XPaths are different, they do give you the same result. Now, one thing you need to be wary of when you're scraping websites is that the data that you scrape might not contain all printable characters. And that's a little hard to see because if they're not printable, they won't show up. But essentially, one thing you should do is wrap your import XML in this clean command and then wrap that in the array formula command, which you can use the command shift enter shortcut to call. And when you hit enter, it should give you the same output, but now it's removed all of those unprintable characters. 
So the next example is gonna be TechCrunch, and I just wanted to solidify that idea of selecting the container. So we wanna grab all of these articles with the headline, the date and author, and the description. So I'll grab Selector Gadget again, and instead of just clicking on one of these attributes, I'm gonna to try to find the container that has all of them. So that looks like it's up here, and I'll click once, and for some reason it's only selecting our premium content articles. So I'll click on another one of these articles that isn't selected, and now you'll see it's turned the other articles all yellow. So we'll come back down to the bottom right where it says XPath, copy this, and then paste this in our Google Sheet. We can write the same command as before, where we pass in the URL and the XPath. And you can see that it populates our spreadsheet with all the articles from TechCrunch. And then the last example, we're going to combine both the power of Selector Gadget Tool, but also the power of knowing XPath to web scrape this Yelp page. So just like before, we can start by opening up Selector Gadget Tool, grabbing the big container that contains all the information we want, clicking on it once, but now everything on the page gets selected. So we'll just click somewhere to deselect. And Selector Gadget's pretty smart, so it figures out we just want the restaurant listings. And we'll follow the same process as before, grabbing the XPath, copying it, going to our spreadsheet. We also do need to grab the URL, so let's copy and paste that. And we'll write import XML, the URL, and the XPath. Except now Google Sheets has scraped all the information of each of these restaurants into one cell per listing. And we could do some text cleaning to separate out these texts into multiple columns, but there's a better way to do it just here. So we'll clear our selection and we'll start by just selecting the restaurant names. So let's do that first. We click on that. It also selected this more, so I'll deselect there. And now it's selected burgers, so I'll deselect that. Oh, it got some pages at the bottom, so let's deselect those too. So now we'll grab this XPath, copy that, and paste that here. And these are gonna be our restaurant names. Here we go. And now let's grab the phone number and address. So we could split it up again by doing the phone number separately from the address, but it looks like they are all in one attribute. So let's try selecting this div tag that seems to contain all these nodes. Grab the XPath, copy it. We'll make a column just on the right. So just so this isn't confusing, I'll cut this off. We're gonna paste this new XPath of the address and phone number, and we'll write our import XML formula right here. Great, and then that seemed to cooperate pretty well. But the last thing I want, and this is where XPath is gonna come in, is the rating. Now, if I were just to grab this rating and use the XPath and do the same process as before, we'll go ahead and cut these off. I'll paste that here and write our import XML command. We just get an empty cell. We've written the command, but nothing populates. So let's go further into the code and see what's going on. Let's right click and hit inspect element. And it looks like this is the div tag that we selected. And inside the div tag, there's the image of the stars, but there's actually no text or anything that indicates what the star rating is. We do see though that there is this attribute called aria-label equals 4.5 star rating. And if we were to go down here, inspect, we can see that it's now four star rating. So the data is there, we just need to figure out how to get it. Well, again, this is where knowing XPath helps because we can go back to our code and actually select the attribute by adding a slash at the end and then an et and then the name of the attribute we wanna grab the text for, which is aria-label and I'll hit enter. It should rerun this formula down here and we'll give it a second to load. But there we go, it gives us all the star ratings. And if we just want to extract the actual numbers, we'll run our regex extract function and we can pass in slash D and possibly a decimal and then possibly another number. And you can see we get our data. So I think Selector Gadget and knowing XPath together can be really useful along with knowing this import XML command in Google Sheets. I certainly won't say that this is always the quickest solution, but it'll definitely be quicker than opening Python or R up in some situations. And you can do a lot of easy data cleaning just from within Google Sheets, which is another huge pro. And if you're still curious about the capabilities of web scraping, either in Google Sheets or even in R, I'd recommend checking out my other videos right here and here. But I just want to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.